Katrina, let's jump right in because I don't want to waste a minute of this. And I know what you have to share is going to be so powerful for so many people. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to be here, Lena. Thanks for having me. We are going to do a deep dive into self-care practices and why we both believe they are absolutely non-negotiable and not something that we should indulge or just claim for ourselves every now and then, but something that really needs to become a way of being in a daily practice, right? You're on the same wavelength. Yeah, totally. Has there been a time in your life where you haven't prioritized self-care and that's why now you're passionate about championing this? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I've been in the the health and fitness industry for a long time, you know, over 20 years in personal training and massage and, and cranial sacral therapy. And uh, over that time, you know, for myself, like I used to be a yes person, um, do everything for everyone else. Um, you know, I would give up, you know, my yoga time for to squeeze a client in. And I guess I just got to a point where I was just like, I can't do this anymore like you know this is just running me ragged and why am I giving up my time you know to serve other people and I think it was just a realization that it was time to take responsibility for my own health and put myself first um, and make myself a priority that um, I could actually take that time and be okay with it because you know I'd take, uh, I, I work from home so you know I have got flexibility with my times but you know sitting down in the middle of the day it's like I can't be doing this I should be at least hanging the washing out or should be doing something else and you know the more then I got talking to other people I was like wow this is actually quite a common thing I've got clients that just feel really guilty for sitting down and putting their feet up for five minutes during the day and I you know I kind of think why wouldn't we why wouldn't we if it's for our own health and well-being that we can actually give it ourselves that time um, that we feel better for doing it, but yet we feel guilty. So I, I struggled with it for years, Lena, like, you know, and I, I guess it's been um, a, a practice that I've really had to work on and, uh, and change my mindset is that, no, I'm number one, and that if I look after me and I look after my health, then actually I'm going to be a, a lot better um, mother, wife, um, you know, health um, care practitioner, because I actually are going to have more energy and I'm going to be more calm and going to be more balanced in that. So yeah, it's been a learning for me. And then from there, it's kind of just progressed into, you know, my work has just kind of gone down this uh, realization that this is something that I feel women really need to hear and need support with. So I guess that's kind of where I've landed in this whole self-care um and helping people yeah we were just speaking before we jumped on to record and we were saying like we each are really passionate about just being a permission slip for other women to prioritize themselves yeah absolutely and um I think it's something there's something very reassuring when we we verbalize that and people hear it that you know um I struggle with it it's not something that you know I've I've just gone woken up and going well I've got it all sorted you know some days I don't get it right um some days I kind of you know get to the end of the day um and think gosh I I haven't been taking that time for myself but I have some I have a uh, some action plans around that now like so if I get to the end of the day I kind of have I call it my plan b um and I, I think, you know, we all can get busy um, and, you know, life can get busy, but it's actually doable. It's actually, you know, it doesn't have to be sitting down and meditating for an hour. It can be just stopping and taking 10 deep present breaths and checking in on yourself. Um, and as much as that sounds like a tiny thing to do, if it's done regularly, I feel that it really brings a whole new awareness to and connection. So a connection on who we are, how we're feeling, and uh, it allows our nervous systems to help to self-regulate as well. So, you know, I, this whole thing, like I struggle with meditation for years. I think I've got to meditate, got to meditate because, you know, that's so good for me. And I tried, and then I realized that for me, I started, I love the nature, nature just is my vibe, and I could do, go for a walk in nature, and that was kind of my, I call it active meditation, but hey, it worked for me, so why am I struggling with trying to sit down for half an hour, 
um, when you know I can go for a walk in the bush or wherever and actually get my same effect um, for me um, and I think that's the thing we're all individuals Lena and we we just need to find what works for for us as an individual yeah I love that you've said that. So I have an almost three-year-old, Tyson, and he goes to yeah. daycare a few days a week. And I find on those days, I feel the cortisol and adrenaline just building in me because I want to be super productive in the five hours that I have to myself. And it's kind yeah. of um, counterintuitive because I want to do so much, but then I get so overwhelmed that I end up, you know what it's like, you're trying to do 10 things at once and it's not always effective. And so I only just recently in the last few weeks I've been um in the car after I drop him off at daycare just sitting for three minutes and doing nice. this left, left nostril breathing practice to just excellent bring it all down because I think as, as mums or as people that have lots of responsibilities we can all relate to having to kind of generate a lot of energy and momentum at the beginning of the day absolutely um, but we have to just kind of pull it back a little otherwise it just gets ahead of us I think yeah, and I, I, I absolutely like you know um, we we try and squeeze so many so much in, and you know I still find like you know in the weekend I still found myself I was like had all the stuff I want to do, and um, I have to stop and catch myself and think, okay, realistically, what what can I do, and be okay with it as well, but actually still finding that time where you can just like you said sit in the car for three minutes. I mean, you know, when you're at the lights waiting for the lights to change just focus on some deep breath you know it, like I said it sounds small but it's so um, rewarding and, and nurturing to our, our whole our whole systems really and I guess a lot of the, my learnings comes from my cranial sacral um, and if you don't know what cranial sacral is it's a natural therapy which we are I'm tuned in listening with my hands uh, to people's systems uh, and it's tuning into the body's own own intelligence to heal but through this work, it's made me realize that the deeper we listen, the quieter we listen, the more we can actually hear. So when you actually slow down and tune in to how you're feeling, you know, how's the left side of your body feeling to the right side of your body? What it does, it allows the nervous system to just slow down and drop. And what we tend to do in our busy lives is our nervous systems kind of go into this fight flight, but they don't really get a chance to reset themselves and they kind of reset themselves, you know, a little bit lower, but that becomes our normal. So by, you know, just simple things by deep breathing, it allows our nervous systems to really drop back down. And most of my clients that come in that have been on my, my uh, the bed, the biggest thing they say, I've, I haven't felt that relaxed for, I can't even remember. It's because we've just really deepened and regulated their system. So you imagine if you could just stop and do a little bit each day, how your nervous system will get that self-regulation and it would um, allow you that when you do maybe do some meditation or, or whatever it works for you, to, it, it, it allows your system to go even deeper. And when you experience it, it's quite a phenomenal feeling really because it's, it's kind of like a Zen space. Um, but we just don't we just don't allow us, ourselves the time to maybe do it. So this is what I really want to encourage people to do is that you have got the time by making yourself a priority and it only can be you know those two, three, four, five minutes a day, which is realistic. I, I, I know it's realistic for the busiest person in the world. <laughs> As I'm listening to you, I'm wondering, and I'd love your insight on this, whether we've got it twisted a little bit when we think that um, our state of busy and productive and being all things and doing all things is normal and that being at a state of ease and relaxation and presence is kind of like, it's not the normal, it's just something that we can visit and experience when we get time. Do you think we have that completely backwards in our society? Yeah, absolutely. I I think the world's getting busier and crazier that it's kind of, it, it's kind of, that's how it's set. Like, you know, it, it, it does feel like it needs to be the other way around. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, when, you know, back in the day where, you know, your fight flight is basically for running away from a, a, a tiger, isn't it? You know, but nowadays it seems to be initiated just with a phone call that could be your boss saying something that, you know, that you're, it really gets your systems going. So um, the more we slow down and show our systems, we're going to kind of retrain, maybe retrain it. 
retrain our systems to be able to experience it and reset our normal. But yeah, you're right. It kind of has round the wrong way. In your experience, if women dedicate or devote themselves even just to a few minutes a day, how quickly can they expect to experience themselves in a new way? Look, I think it's a, it's, it's like anything, it's a, a learned skill to be able to, um, to bring this into a routine uh, daily. But, you know, I think quite instantly, because there's a sense of at the end of the day, when you've given yourself some time, like, oh, I feel really good because I've actually um, done something for me. And I tell you, there's a lot of women and especially mums they go to the bottom of the pile. I mean, I've, I've got a 12 year old daughter and I, I, you know, I'd always, you know, this part of me just wants to put her first, you know, because that's what we do as mums, you know, we kind of would do anything for our, our children. And, um, you know, if, if you haven't got kids, it may be for your partner or your husband or, you know, y- your parents, but um, yeah, I guess it's just a matter of um, by putting yourself first, within a short space of time I really do feel that you'll get the sense of um, maybe fulfillment and um, some happiness that you've done something for yourself yeah so look everyone's quite individual but I would imagine that by doing it over a week and that you'll start to notice that yeah I'm actually feeling good for doing something for me you know, it's just a small part of the puzzle, Lena. Like, you know, stopping and doing something for yourself isn't magically going to go, oh, well, I'm going to wake up feeling amazing every morning because that's not how it's going to work. Um, I wake up feeling really crap some mornings, but, you know, I'm really mindful. Okay, what does my body need? Um, get up, hydrate my body. You know, I've just slept. So, um, yeah, so I, I think, it, it, you know, with every individual, it's going to be a little bit different. But I think that sense of doing something for yourself is going to be instant. You know, for me, it's taken me a long time to be able to articulate and identify the benefits, I suppose, within myself. But what I noticed straight away um, was that I would get to the end of the day and I didn't have such a long list of regrets. I didn't have such... um, like I wouldn't go back over my day and be like, oh, I was really reactive there. Oh, I was really impatient there. Oh, I acted in a way I don't like there. That started to fade away because I wasn't just, you know, constantly in a state of like tension and friction. I was relieving that for myself throughout the day. And so it meant that I wasn't having these like little outbursts at the people closest to me. And that that was like an instant thing that I thought, oh, this is worth it because it's actually improving my relationships. Um, yeah totally and so that's what really made me lean into it and also I think another thing was for me as a woman redefining what it means to be loving because I think I was raised um, to believe that love means that you sacrifice yourself for the people that you love so Mm. I grew up you know seeing my mum absolutely put herself at the bottom of the list underneath our immediate family underneath her parents underneath like she was like well below and she's a beautiful woman and so giving but I also saw her suffer immensely because of that Um, and so I've had to redefine what it means to be a loving partner a loving daughter a loving mother and understand that it means that I fill my own cup so that I don't make my own reactivity somebody else's problem you know I take care of me so that I can just come re-enter the world re-enter the relationship fully expressed as a light and not just this like spooky reactive you know hypersensitive like being which I think we can all do if we feel like we're just repressed and under the pump and about to burst you know absolutely and for me on a personal note like from doing my um self-care on a regular daily basis is that I really noticed that I was a lot calmer in reactions to life in general. So when something would happen, I could stop and go, okay, I kind of I kind of could step back a lot easier from, from things. And, you know, reality is life's going to throw us curveballs all the time. Um, and I just feel that I don't get stressed by them as much because I have the ability to regulate my nervous system to stay a lot calmer and I would say that's probably for me the biggest thing for 
doing things for myself. But I get what you say is, um, you know, being more loving because what, what a great role model now for your son because he's going to grow up going, wow, look at mum. She really, you know, nurtures herself in a way and looks after herself and he's going to learn that because our kids are like little sponges of how, you know, how what they learn. So, yeah, it's, that's awesome. I love it. And I will say our kids are so resilient and they adapt to whatever we kind of create as a new normal in the household. Like I've got my little daily rituals and I'm fortunate enough we have a treadmill at home and my son knows like mum goes on the treadmill every morning. That's my time to play with my yep. toys, probably ask for some TV and I'll get it. And he knows, yep. you know, and he he's kind of almost respectful of that half an hour that I have on the treadmill because he also knows after that, mum hops off the treadmill and is fully present I'm there with yeah. you you know so it, yeah. it serves everybody in the long run I think absolutely yeah absolutely um you know and I think um what I encourage what I encourage a woman or anyone to do is think of self-care like brushing your teeth in the morning you know it's just part of what you do you just get up well you know we brush oh hopefully you brush your teeth at night as well um <laughs> but you know if you didn't, imagine it, you know, imagine, you know, like how, how your teeth would feel and you end up at the dentist with holes, in, you know, to me, self-care is kind of like that, just nurturing and keeping ourselves looked after in the long run, you know, and, and, and long term is, is looking after our health uh, as we get older as well. So I really like that analogy is that just, you know, self-care is just like brushing your teeth. <laughs> and self-care is not just something we have to offer to ourselves because we you know feel like we're suffering in some way it's like it's the opposite you can give yourself full permission to just give yourself full self-care practices because you love yourself not despite absolutely. who you are because of who you are you yeah know? yeah absolutely it's um it's it's so you know nurturing to mind body and soul so it's yeah, I think that um, we need to kind of spread the word around and uh, support. So that's probably another area, you know, is having that support is another great thing. So encouraging, you know, exactly, tell your kids, you know, this is my time, I'm going to be 20 minutes and I just, this I need to do this for me or your husband or partner, or who it is, your family, get them involved. I mean, hopefully they'll just go, wow, you know, I want a bit of that as well. So the more you, you, you tell your family and your friends, the more um, support you have around, you know, how, how cool is that to have, you know, a friend kind of check in and say, oh, how's, how's it going? Like, I just think that the more, more we talk and the more we involve people, the, um, I guess the easier it can be as well. Yeah. Throughout um, COVID here in Victoria, we were locked down for, you know, months and months, but you were allowed to go out for one hour of exercise within, you know, a certain distance from your home. And we're lucky we live near a national park. And my husband decided to just rekindle his love of mountain bike riding because he had the time to do it. Yeah. And so, you know, he was going a couple of times a week by himself and riding his mountain bike or whatever. And I felt this kind of like resentment building within me and I couldn't understand why I was getting annoyed. And I heard myself saying, you know, if I was struggling with the house, which was a mess because we were all just living in it constantly, you're always out riding your bike, which was so yeah. ridiculous because it was like, yeah. Awesome. an hour a few times a week but I realized I was kind of um, feeling a kind of just resentment and jealousy that he had something for himself very clearly that he could go and enjoy and do for him and I was really struggling um, during COVID because all the things that I would usually do or use or leverage to you know make me feel good had been taken away from me and so I realized it was really important for me to just get to know myself again and really sit with myself and ask what do you need what would fulfill you right now so that I didn't discredit or take away from the fact that he had that for himself you know how yeah. unfair on him yeah yeah but even voicing that to him and you know having those those clear communications about him probably for you know what was he getting out of the mountain biking what did that give him and it probably you know could have given him a real sense of just you know with the lockdown just get the bit of freedom in there and I think when we have a bit more understanding about you know our loved ones and why they're doing it it kind of it, it, it helps with that too because I've you know my husband's going out mountain bike because he mountain bikes as well 
I just know that him going out by himself and you know he he works quite long hours is that has his time and it's you know he gets to the top of the mountain and, and he's got a little spot where he sits well that's as good as his thinking time so you know I really um respect that and I think it's so important for him so I'm like yeah off you off you go <laughs> um yeah yeah so it is it is it is important to voice and you know talk to your loved ones and you know see what they need and you know uh give them give each other space in whatever form that is yeah no my husband said very similar to what your husband was using that for you know he said when I'm out in nature it just makes me realize how small we are and how insignificant we are and our problems really are and just you know allowed him to see COVID and everything that was going on just from a different context and so he came home and he's just like most down to earth happy-go-lucky and that's what I love about him so there's no way I would want to remove anything that allows him to become more of who he is um And so I think it's just why I'm bringing it up is I think for some of us, you know, if we don't have our own practices already, we're going to be maybe subconsciously a little bit resentful or jealous, or we won't understand why people are creating boundaries around their time and the practices that they take for themselves. And so rather than just kind of reacting and trying to make others stop doing what they're doing, we really need to double down on understanding who we are and what works for us so that we can give that to ourselves as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there's so many tentacles and facets of, of this that we could go off in directions, couldn't we? But, you know, um, I think just coming back to yeah, being respectful of yourself, being respectful of others around you, and um, gosh, you know, even encouraging loved ones to take some time out and, um, you know, it, I think it's about finding your thing. You know, it's like in the fitness industry, I just say, you know, look to clients like, you know, what works for me doesn't work for you and it's the same with self-care like I know what works for me I know the things I like to surround myself with like you know I'll burn a candle smells are great um you know growing my own little flowers outside of my backyard just surrounding myself because I feel good things you know looking at um photos of some fantastic memories and and just placing yourself back there like you know that can just create such a great feeling for for your body and I guess that's what self-care is eh? like I, so I've you know created a little bit of, of an online um uh training video free training video and you know it just goes over five tips and it's really basic stuff just to get you start to think about self-care for you and the number one is what is self-care because what self-care is for me might be quite different for you Lena you know like um and to start thinking about that whole being responsible for our own health and well-being uh you know what are the things you love to do get get creative what are the things you've forgotten that you love to do you know for when you're a kid it might be skipping you know it might be kicking well you know it could be anything but you know getting clear when you're clear on what things you love and make you really your heart sing feel good um I think it makes it a lot easier because then you have a bit of a go-to list and you know my go-to list I've got some easy things like candles nice scented flowers growing out of my therapy room um you know photos like if I'm feeling really down I can just kind of really be present with those and almost go back to my you know my time you know, uh, wherever I was in that photo. So, um, you know, when I've got a bit more time, I can go out into nature or go to the ocean or, you know, I've, I've kind of got such a list of, of things to do. It just makes it a lot easier to, because I've reconnected with what, what works for me. So I encourage you, you know, what works for you? Sit down and take a moment and, and um, be creative. And it's quite that. fun because you remember, yeah, it might be, it might be putting on music and just having a good sing, you know? If women dance. Wanted, if women wanted to access your full training, how can they find that? I know you've got it online. Where is it? Uh, yeah, so if you go to www.yesmyselfcare.com, that will take you to a link that will then take you into my free training video. It will go over five, five easy tips to get you thinking and getting you started on, you know, your self-care, whether you're doing some at the moment or maybe you want to expand on it. Um, and then there's also a link underneath that uh, video that will take you into my private self um, Facebook uh, self-care group 
that's just basically a bit of support. So it's a place where I will give little tips and ideas and you know people can share things if they choose to uh, and really just wanting to support people in their transition of going maybe from nothing to doing something or maybe if they're wanting to you know uh, find a few uh, few more ideas or you know uh, I think I think a community a really safe fun community I mean it's it's great I, I, I love everyone kind of coming together like-minded people um, so you know if that's something that you kind of feel that yeah, that, that sounds really great. Then yeah, you can go to that um, yesmyselfcare.com and I'd love to, you know, I'd love to have you as part of the community and, you know, working along and, you know, coming and talking to you, Lena, has just been fantastic because, you know, this is what it's all about. What, you know, we're here to, you know, help people feel good. And it's such, you know, that's why I do what I do. I just, I just love, um, connecting with new people and um, it's really inspiring for me I kind of get those warm fuzzies when you know you get someone <laughs> I'm sure you do too yeah I definitely yeah. do and we'll wrap it up now but I just want to say thank you because exactly what you're saying I love being able to model the types of conversations that women can have with each other it's so powerful to say what are you doing for yourself what works for you you know so we can all yeah. just learn from each other and support each other and yeah, I just appreciate your time so much today. Oh, no, thank you so much. I've loved coming on speaking to you. Um, and uh, yeah, and I, uh, I, you know, hope whoever's listening to this, you know, starts doing a little bit of self-care if you aren't already, you know, just find some time for you because you are so worth it. Um, your whole being is worth it. And um, yeah, I'm really grateful to you, Lena, for letting me come on and chat with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, guys. Yeah. Thank you.